Understanding matrix routing is essential to understanding the diva. Matrix routing makes it possible for the diva to send any input, be it analog and or digital, to any recording track and or output bus. It also allows any of the front panel faders to control any input. Furthermore, any disc track or output bus can be displayed on any meter and routed to the headphones. The flexibility is incredible, but the implementation is remarkably straightforward. Let's take a look. Starting at the home screen, press Menu and then Disk Mix. It is helpful to think of this grid as a series of rows, which are horizontal, and columns being vertical. In Disk Mix, each row represents a record track. Notice that there are 10 rows, which represents 10 record tracks on a standard Diva, and 16 on a Diva 16 represented on two pages. Let's keep that in mind now as we examine the columns. There are 10 columns labeled IN1, IN2, and so forth to IN8, which represent analog inputs, digital inputs, or even both. The Diva Slate mic and internally generated tone are the final two columns. Let's start by routing the Slate mic to disk track 1 by pressing the box immediately below the slate to place an X. This X indicates that the slate mic is now routed to disk track 1. If we want to route slate to disk track 2, all we have to do is place an X connecting the slate to disk track 2. Note that the slate mic is special in that it is activated by pressing the slate button on the front of the Diva. Next, we will route some of our audio sources to disk tracks. Let's assume that we are using an external mixer to accomplish all of our mixing, and we are not using any of the mixing functionality built into the Diva. Press Preset to advance to Preset 3, which should contain no routings. The bottom row should read Analog and Prefader. The following routing is commonly used with external analog mixers. Let's route Input 1 to Record Track 1, by placing a white A, meaning analog input pre-fader, under IN1, connecting it to disk track 1, which is the first row. Now, any audio signal entering input 1 will proceed to disk track 1 without regard to the Divas faders. Continue by placing a white A connecting input 2 to record track 2, 3 to 3, 4 to 4, and so forth, diagonally down to track 8. We have now routed all of the analog inputs to their own record tracks in that order. We will not route slate and tone in this menu because we are going to generate slate and tone using our external mixer. This is all the routing necessary if using the Diva as a recorder only. The following routing is appropriate for use with an external mixer that is feeding the Diva digital audio. Let's move to preset 4 to further our understanding of matrix routing. Press analog on the bottom row to change it to digital. Now, press the empty box routing input 1 to disk track 1. Remember that digital inputs are on the side of the Diva and are labeled AESM. Continue placing white Ds in a diagonal pattern until reaching track 8. We have now routed the eight digital inputs to their correlating disk tracks. The significance of the Ds being white is that they are not affected by the Divas faders. The following routing is useful when using the Divas internal mixer. Advanced to preset 5, where we will create a typical over-the-shoulder or Mix 12 routing setup with a mono mix track and three microphone sources. Press the boxes on the lower row so the Diva reads analog in and post fader. Place a black A connecting analog input 1 post fader to disk track 1. Input 1 now goes through the Diva's fader on the way to record track 1. If fader 1 is left at unity, 
the 3 o'clock position, then the routing will behave the same as if the fader were not in line. If we turn the fader counterclockwise, the audio signal decreases. If we turn the fader clockwise, the audio level increases. The audio level control is accomplished in the digital domain. Place a black A connecting input 2 to disk track 1. This A indicates analog input 2 is routed to disk track 1 as well. The black A once again indicates that the signal is fader dependent. Let's place a final black A connecting input 3 to disk track 1. Back on the home screen, we can see that adjusting faders 1, 2, and 3 make adjustments to the mix track in the same way traditional faders do on a flat panel mixer. Now, one of the best reasons to mix or record with a Diva is that we can record not only our mix track, but also each audio source on independent tracks. This reduces retakes for audio when there is no time for rehearsals on set and is especially useful for post-production during editing. Let's route each of our microphones to their own tracks without respect to the Divas faders. Return to the disk mix and make sure that the bottom row now reads analog in and pre-fader. Place a white A connecting input 1 to disk track 2. Any audio fed to analog input 1 will now be sent to record track 2 without respect to the Divas faders. Continue routing pre-fader microphones by placing a white A connecting input 2 to disk track 3 and input 3 to disk track 4. Return to the home screen and note that the faders control the inputs on their way to disk track 1, but not on their way to disk tracks 2, 3, and 4. This is all the routing necessary to record a mono mix track with three analog microphone sources. It is possible to route digital and analog inputs to the same disk track. For example, to add a digital source to our mix, connect it to the AES 1 and 2 input. Go to the disk mix. Make sure the bottom row says digital and post fader. Then press the box connecting input 1 to disk track 1. Note that a black D appears in addition to the A. These routings are independent of one another and can be pre or post fader. Let's remove the D before continuing. The output mix is identical to the disk mix, except that it routes inputs to output buses 1 through 8. The output buses are accessible three places on the Diva. Output buses 1 through 6 are available via the 25-pin D-sub analog output cable. Output buses 5 and 6 are also available on the 10-pin camera output. All eight output buses are available on the AES output as four output pairs. Outputs from the Fusion 12 and Diva 16 are a little bit different. The D sub analog output carries output buses 1 through 8, and there are no outputs on the 10 pin connector. It's important to understand that this menu routes inputs to outputs, not disk tracks to outputs. If you wish to route your mix as it appears on track 1 on the home screen, simply duplicate the settings for that track in the output mix. Let's route a split stereo mix to the camera output. First, choose analog and post fader. Then, press the box connecting input 1 to output bus 5. This routes the audio connected to input 1 to the left side of the camera 10 pin out. Place two black A's connecting inputs 2 and 3 to output 6. This will send the other two audio signals out to the right side of the camera output. Press Menu, then Faders. Four virtual faders labeled 9, 
10, 11, and 12 will appear. By default, these faders control the levels for analog inputs 5, 6, 7, and 8. You may only adjust one of them at a time. Press Fader Assign to bring up the fader routing matrix. This menu routes inputs to faders. By default, input 1 is routed to fader 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, and 4 to 4. This is good for our four track over the shoulder setup. We can create a master fader by choosing analog in on the bottom row and placing black A's connecting inputs 1, 2, and 3 to fader 4. When we turn fader 4 counterclockwise, all audio signals are attenuated proportionally. In this matrix, the top row is the left headphone and the bottom row is the right headphone. Each column represents a disc track. Press the X connecting disc track 2 to headphone R to unassign it. Next, press the box connecting track 1 and headphone R. Now our mono mix is routed to both ears. You are now ready to route audio into and out of the Diva. Once you've mastered this concept, you won't be repatching cables as often. Happy virtual routing.